Good evening everyone. Uh, I'm here in Cebu and I'm honored to interview the Chairman and President of uh, Topline uh, Development Corporation. Uh, he's a young entrepreneur and I know you would be able to learn a lot from him. Uh, again, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you to the Philippine Business News. Hi, uh, I'm Eric Lim uh, from Topline, uh, well, Topline Group of com Companies. Uh, we're actually into the, well, when we started, we're, we were in the real estate business. And then eventually we also uh, developed uh, mall development, we have ports. Uh, but right now, our core business is actually we're into liquid fuel. Uh, well, it started when we saw the opportunity because we were operating this war. And then eventually, uh, we saw the different oil tankers refueling the vessels uh, in, the, in the war. And then we said, how about we enter into that industry? And then fast forward 11 years later, it's now our core business, which is uh, liquid fuel. Uh, I started as a buy and sell thing, uh, buy low, sell high, and then eventually we just had to make sure that we also had to innovate uh, throughout the years. And then at the same time, we're also doing backward and forward integration, backward meaning uh, our depot operations to make sure of reliability of supply. And at the same time for forward integration, uh, that's opening di different um, fuel uh, uh, service stations, which is the light fuels brand. So that's where we are at right, we're at right now. Now, what what really led you to you expand? Uh, what did you see uh, down the road that made you to diversify into other businesses? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's more of um, checking the the market uh, in the industry. So we're checking about different um, possibilities for growth. And uh, fortunately, when we saw the liquid fuel segment, which is if you see the the different um, energy needs for the Philippines. We're still growing, uh, and we we're, we have yet to reach our peak you know, for the Philippines. And it's also nice to grow with that uh, growth, uh, and we see that uh, the liquid fuel segment is still there uh, for to to make sure that the the growth is sustainable. No. You have a very impressive uh, performance, uh, 53 percent, and recently 2.8 billion. Yes, sir. Um, um, do you see that this will continue? Because you presented a while ago the different uh, data, yeah. pandemic, uh, post-pandemic. Uh, do you see the upward trend? Uh, are you bullish about it? Yeah, we still we still see a lot of um, uh, bullishness in the market, uh, as as what we were discussing earlier, um, for especially for Central Visayas. Uh, in terms of growth, I think we're about top five you know, in the Philippines. No, top four, top five, around that, that number. Uh, and if you look at different segments for Central Visayas, um, if the growth there is, is growing uh, at that pace, and then we can also probably mirror that growth and even surpass it, it's already very good. So we still see a lot of opportunity for mga underserved uh, areas that we can also tap tap on in the next hopefully in the next few years yeah so the the idea also i i was really impressed <laughs> about the idea of future ready uh <laughs> station um Thank you. given the trend right now uh what really led you because not not everybody is into you know ev but do you see the the promising potential of ev uh here in cebu particularly well, well i think um, if you look at the industry right now, um, there, there's always a chance for EV to also grow. Uh, but the thing right now is, if you look at the, the different segments in the market, I think there's always a balance in terms of um, the usual combustion engine and also EV. So uh, when, we, when, we, when we probably grow in the future, there's going to be a parallel growth for both. Uh, that's my, my assumption. Uh, but if you look at the let's say the first world countries, I think the adoption rate is still not not quite there in terms of infrastructure. And for us developing countries, it's also a different story. So we'll see, we'll see in the next few years. Yeah, I noticed you have a very good uh, synergy with the 
rigid and constant. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's a rarity. I've been in interviewing a lot of uh, family-owned corporation oh. uh, owners, etc. Mm. What do you think is the secret <laughs> of your family? Because for me, maybe this is my perception. Uh, the, the, the the performance of the company, uh, especially going upward, will not happen if, if you are divided. But exactly. here, um, what do you think that keeps this kind of strong band together without any jealousy? Because the one I can cite is the McKenney family. Mm, yes, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you have the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just quite interesting if you if you discuss about um, family dynamics, because it's always there, you know, um, especially my, uh, well, my sister, uh, uh, Bridget, is actually our eldest, and then uh, Attorney Mikey, which is a CPA, is our youngest, and then how do we blend together? <laughs> so, but, but it's just quite nice you know, if, you, if you have uh, a synergy between, between siblings, because it's also easy to, easier to talk to. So I think the common ground there, the common denominator there is, is probably respect. Uh, respect on, in, in the family, personally, and also respect in the workplace. So if, if we're, we're discussing about the workplace, um, of course, see there, Mambridge. Mambridge, let's say, she's, she's still one of the heads and everything, but we have that respect. If there are certain decisions to be made, depends on which hierarchy is there. But when we go a little bit deeper into a personal level, um, she's still the eldest, <laughs> so I can I'll still say, "Mom." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I noticed that. Like, what can young uh, entrepreneurs uh, learn from uh, the Eric? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, aside from not sleeping, um, well, I think to have a first would be discipline. No, that's that's always on the table. No, we have to make sure that uh, well, deadlines has to be met, <laughs> in, especially in life. Was there a time that you wanted to give up uh, in, in this business? Um, well, I, I'm not saying giving up, but I, I would say there's a lot of hardships yeah. involved. So a lot of sleepless nights, uh, sleepless nights. Any message to the young uh, <laughs> entrepreneurs, Filipino entrepreneurs, who will what can you what tips can you give to them? Well. I can just say that um, hopefully you'll be going to the uh, the workforce soon, you know? and also if you're making your own business, uh, I would like to say it again you know, in my other interview as well, uh, to just probably just start. You know? So just start, I mean, if you're thinking about a certain business, uh, it's always the, the hardest thing is always the first step. So just try try to do to do baby steps first, just start, and then eventually get a really good team you know, that you can trust, and then you know everything will follow. If your heart is on the right place, your direction is there. Uh, I'm sure that you can definitely uh, conquer any any kind of obstacle, yeah. especially in business. Uh, but again, um, as what you always say, um, there's no there's no perfect situation. There's only a perfect mindset. So it's important to have that mindset there.